Okay. All right. Um, welcome everyone to today's webinar on scale with the right technology and increased productivity with tech-enabled support services. My name is Adam May. I'm the Vice President of Managed Services at Service Rocket. I've been in the B2B software industry for almost 30 years in a variety of roles around support, consulting, customer education, and various services to customers. Um, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to um, use the QR code in the upper right. Um, joining me today for this as co-host is Ravi Belusu. He is the CTO and co-founder of The Loops. Um, similar to me, he has a rich experience in B2B software companies with a particular area of expertise in AI-driven customer experience operations, uh, natural language processing-based analytics, and predictive insights. Uh, similar to me, his QR code to his LinkedIn profile is also in the upper right. All right, so let's take a look at the agenda itself. Um, first, I want to take a look at tech support and compare and contrast that to tech-enabled support. Then we'll dive into some of the benefits of tech-enabled support. We'll talk about why you should be interested in service rockets. Uh, Ravi will then talk about why you should be interested in the loops. Um, we'll talk about together, how they work better together. And then we'll open it up to a question and answer session. I do wanna let people know, you feel free to enter any questions you have in the Q&A section and um, put those in as soon as you have the questions. You don't need to hold them to the end, even if we answer them then. Okay, so starting off from the top, uh, people are used to tech support. Software companies have been delivering that for decades. Um, but what's tech enable support? What is this new term of this webinar here? So from a um, tech enabled support, really combines, first of all, uh, world-class talent. Um, you combine that with uh, best processes, you put in innovative technology, and really the purpose of all of this is how do you create smoother workflows and how do you minimize the friction both for customer organizations as well as your own internal organization. Um, when you take a look back to traditional tech support, it's very reactionary and tiered. Um, by reactionary, we mean nothing really happens until someone initiates and puts out a particular issue. And it's tiered. You know, you have a question, you have a pain, you're frustrated, you create an issue, and it goes to a tier one support level. That tier one support level asks you a bunch of questions, often don't help you, it gets moved to a tier two support, they ask the same questions over and over again, and so on and so forth. Um, this uh, creates a, a lot of frustration in the customers. But software companies traditionally viewed support as a cost center, right? Um, you want to minimize costs. You want to have as few people, as little investment as this possible, and just try to get by. Um, however, um, there's been real, a real uh, strategic shift in the industry. You know, traditionally, companies sold huge perpetual licenses for a lot of dollars, did all the selling up front. Yeah, they had maintenance contracts, but it really was that upfront sale that mattered. That's no longer true in the majority of cases today. Today, Customers are essentially buying as they go. They're paying monthly subscription fees. Um, you know, it's easy to get onboarded onto a solution, but also much easier to get off. Traditionally, it was, you, know, you paid all this money up front and it was hard and expensive to change solution providers. Now it's actually really easy. Um, and given that it's really easy, um, it means that um, you don't want to frustrate your customers anymore, right? Um, you want to make sure that you deliver a customer support experience that really drives customer success and drives customer loyalty, right? When a customer comes to you and files an issue, they have pain, they have an issue, um, and we are here to be able to solve that issue. You know what? And if we solve it quickly and efficiently, we are seen as their hero, and that's really where we need to be. So then the question is, okay, so how do you, how do, you do that, right? Um, the first thing, you know, we talked about is this, um, you know, world-class talent. Um, you need people that um, are both technically savvy, but also have the right level of customer empathy and can put themselves in their customer shoes. Um, one of the interesting things is, you know, when we hire our um, support engineers, um, yes, they must have a base of technology. That's, that's always true. But the main thing we actually look for is customer empathy, because we can always teach someone how to use a new software package, um, but really getting people that really understand customers and empathize with them is much harder. So you need the right people. Um, 
absolutely need the right processes. You need to have the right things in place so you're not shunting people from area to area and not really solving their issues. And then finally, absolutely need world-class technology to solve that pain ASAP. So <laughs> what, what is this? What are these processes and technology, right? Um, first, from a technology perspective, um, want to make sure you get people the information in the right format when they need it. So there's people out there that um, are very self-service focused. They just want to do things themselves. You know, I'm savvy. Um, you know, you can have uh, self-service solutions like knowledge bases and all of that work great for them. So allow them to use what they want to use. Um, it is important to make sure these tune themselves, right? So as people continue to use them, things are working and not working. You want this to get better and better over time. Um, you know, we have a lot of our customers, you know, look and want to use chat, right? It's a little more synchronous. Um, it gets a little more help, but it can quickly and easily answer these short little questions that people have. Um, but the thing to also realize is people are dealing with more and more complexity in this world. Again, you know, if I uh, harken back to traditional technology, you know, you would understand one software product, you provide support for that, and life would be okay. Um, nowadays, you need to provide support for the entire ecosystem. You need to provide support for an individual product, but also people are using it integrated with lots of other products and you need to support everything they're trying to do. You can't just say, hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, I know you're using my product, but don't worry about my product, it's someone else's product and hand them off to multiple support centers, right? Because once again, if you frustrate customers and balance it, it means that they will reduce their customer loyalty and they won't renew and your revenue will suffer. Um, instead, you know, when we take a look at leading companies, uh, they're using innovative queuing technology to optimally assign the right issue to the right person. Um, when you take a look at, um, you know, the difference between using an AI solution and not, um, you know, if you have a small support volume, yeah, you can probably get by with a support manager manually figuring out, okay, this particular issue goes to this support engineer and this particular issue goes to that support engineer. Um, but as volume increases, um, that problem doesn't work anymore. And the interesting thing with increasing volume is for people, the more volume, the more overwhelmed people get. And they actually perform a lot worse under huge volume sets. But AI solutions perform actually better. The more data you give them, the better and better they perform. That's really you know, a fundamental difference here. And that's why it's great to use technologies like the loops to be able to analyze these very large um, data sets. Um, you can start getting information around trending information, seeing what's hot. You can drive uh, sentiment down to individual tickets. Um, net result of all of this is, you know, customers need to have the best possible experience. And also, you need to make sure your agents have the best possible experience for them as well. So, <laughs> um, you know, you take a look at the current environment, um, you know, as recently as a year ago, um, funding was was really easy. <laughs> there was a lot of it for companies out there. Um, and for them, the equation was actually really, really simple. You get a lot of funding, you want a good customer experience, you do that with people, you just hire a bunch of people, um, deliver a reasonable experience and, and life is okay. Um, but that world has changed, right? We are now living in a world where there is not near the same level of um, funding available to companies out there. And there's pressure, particularly from top executives and board to drive efficiency. Um, if all you have to deliver customer experience is people, the only way you reduce costs, get efficiency is getting rid of people. And when you get rid of people, you hurt your customer experience, which is again, what you don't want. But there is, there is a better way, right? Um, what we need to do is really leverage you know, these great um, ideas around how do you get things to the right person in the right way? How do I get technology to scale things effectively and efficiently so that I can scale my business without pouring a lot more cost into it? So how does it benefit um, tech-enabled uh, support, benefit customers, support teams, company, and you yourself? Um, first, looking at customer benefits, uh, we touched on the first item. Um, about preferred sentiment, or, or sorry, preferred communication channel um, here and allowing people to interact in the way they want to interact. Um, you know, having the AI really understand uh, sentiment um, is really important um, because, for example, you can have, you know, look at a bunch of cues, uh, sorry, look at a bunch of cases in a queue and rather than having someone look at them, say, okay, these are some really angry customers. 
I have some agents over here that are really good at working with angry customers and understanding the root causes and, and helping them out. So I will orient these in the right way, again, without um, anyone manually interfering in that and, again, making things more efficient. I might have other issues that, for example, a customer is asking about a REST API um, for that particular thing. Let's route that to a support engineer um, to, that uh, has you know, a developer background and, and can handle that. Um, end of the day, what we really want to do is find this optimal match without bouncing. You do that, you can get faster resolution to each of these, and the customers that seek your support feel much better about it because they've had this answered quickly and easily. Um, you know, your support team itself have benefits as well. The first key thing is, you know, in a traditional system, um, you know, they have their ticketing system they work in. Um, if they need information around um, the customer and what the renewal is and their spend, and if they're a platinum or a gold or silver customer, that comes from CRM. If they have, you know, all the tickets come in one system. If they have questions or issues about bugs, that goes in, you know, their bug system, whether it's Jira or something else. Um, first important concept here is bringing that all together in one view so that your support team doesn't have to go out to a bunch of different systems and search for things and try and bring these together. They can answer it quickly and easily all at once. Um, allows uh, much better prioritization, again, for these. You know, which are the ones that are about to breach an SLA? Which are the ones that are for a customer that has a renewal date coming up? You know, how do you pull this together and prioritize each of these? And then very importantly, anytime you have an escalation, it costs your company money. Right. What it means is you have to pull in more people, appraise them the situation. You often get executives, other people involved. If you can reduce or eliminate those escalations by understanding the customer and providing the level of support they expect or better, um, you know, it will greatly enhance your, your company and you can scale it much more effectively. Um, as far as your customer, uh, your company itself, um, you know, driving happier customers um, will allow you to increase customer loyalty. Increase customer loyalty re will reduce um, churn. Um, and then um, another key point here as well is nowadays, how well you provide customer support is almost a public record. Right? It used to be that you know, if you have a bad support experience, you could tell a couple of colleagues. Nowadays, you have a bad support experience, you publish it, right? Um, and people can see all those um, scores and rankings on support. Um, so now it now drives revenue as people decide whether or not to purchase based on these um, support scores. And then finally, um, for you uh, yourself, um, it gives you know this better predictability, um, gives you peace of mind because you know you have the right process in place, the right technology is in place, and your customers will be taken care of. And then hopefully, because you've delivered better success to your customers, your support engineers have you know better jobs and have less stress, you've driven better um, uh, revenue to the company, hopefully you get that well-deserved promotion. Okay, so in quick summary, um, tech-enabled services are support services that are able to scale quickly uh, rather than scaling linearly as you grow your business. They're really focused on delighting the customer, getting them the right information when they need it quickly and efficiently. And the overall intention of this is by doing that, you'll uh, improve your bottom line results. So, who is Service Rocket and how will we help you? So um, Service Rocket is a leading tech-enabled services company, accelerates the growth of software companies and their customers. Um, how does it do that? <laughs> um, we do that by maximizing software adoption, return on investment. Um, we provide an ecosystem of capabilities that span software implementation, adoption, retention, and expansion. That's a very dense sentence, right? It does accurately capture who it is and what we do, but when you read it like that, it's really a mouthful. So let me talk about it a little bit more and, and what it means. Um, at, a, at a fundamental level, what we wanna do is allow our customers to focus on their core product. Um, and then what we do is provide a set of uh, services all around that core product. There's a set of ones here that you see labeled internal services. These are services that we provide directly to the companies themselves. So starting from the very beginning, um, we provide pre-sales services and help them close deals. We provide onboarding and help them um, adopt the particular software solutions. Um, of course, we provide tech-enabled support so that um, you know, customers that have questions and issues can get them resolved very quickly. We provide education 
and really provide advisory services to customers and help them structure their education programs in the right, right way. And then finally down here, we provide customer success. So again, these are all we call internal services are provided directly to software vendors themselves. Um, but in the interests of um, really increasing the adoption and the value that customers get out of um, these software solutions, we don't just work with the software vendors, we actually work with the end customers or the customers of these software customers themselves. Um, the types of external services we provide there is we provide resale and we'll um, basically sell our partner software companies software solutions. We do consulting and implementation to get them up and running on these. We train them um, and show them how to get value and how to use them as part of their regular job. We provide administrative services so that we can continue to adapt the software solution to our customer needs over time. And then finally, we build apps on top of our uh, software partners core products to really enhance um, those products. All right, um, so um, what is our approach here? Um, you know, we've been honing our methodology for over 20 years, and it really starts with um, our trusted advisor role to help you strategize and understand what are your goals? What are your initiatives? And how can we help you fulfill each of these? Um, again, working, working with you to help develop best processes, um, bring in the right technology um, so that we can continue to deliver at a higher and higher level for you. Um, definitely believe in an agile framework to this. Um, you, know, you don't get a perfect solution day one. What you do is you get a solution out there um, that adds absolute value but then you continuously improve it and improve it and improve it. So it really does become world-class. And then very importantly, from a scale perspective, make sure all these solutions scale well um, and are not things that again, lead to linear growth, which then becomes uh, cost prohibitive. Okay, um, with that, um, I would like to turn it over to Ravi to talk a little bit about the loops and how it will help you. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for the introduction and um, uh, you know, an awesome, talk about a service rocket. Um, I'll talk a little bit about loops and what we do. Um, I don't know if you can just uh, stay on, on, this, on this slide, that's fine. Um, so what is loops, right? Loops is a predictive CX operations platform that leverages data across your platforms, across your organization to provide actionable insights at every step of your customer interaction. What does that mean? As soon as your customer is getting, um, there's a new interaction from your, from your customer, Loops gathers all the data that is relevant for that uh, for that particular interaction, right? And then gives you predictions as and when uh, during the whole phase of your uh, customer interaction, right? Um, while your system of records like Zendesk, Salesforce, Service Cloud, ServiceNow, Intercom are really good at handling customer interactions and helping the agents interact with those customers, Loops is sitting on the background and trying to look at the bigger picture, right? Trying to look at insights that can help not only the agents, but also the managers and the decision makers to basically see trends uh, or, um, you know, sentiment analysis and things like that from a, from a very decision making perspective and make it not only easier to, uh, to collect information, but also, um, uh, you know, act on it, right? Uh, one of the things that is very difficult about, about um, implementing AI in particular in enterprise is that the data is already siloed, right? There's data, uh, you know, coming from support, support ticket systems, there's data coming from CRM systems, and every decision that you want to make involves these data points across these silos, right? The collect part of the loops ecosystem kind of helps you um, make that journey easier, right? We collect data, we make it very secure within the platform, right? And the next phase is pretty much, you know, training the models, right? It is about training the models. It's not just about the predictions, but also how you consume those predictions in a timely manner when it is required, right? That is really critical. Um, one of the reasons with the, I've developed CX or um, uh, AI products all my life. For the last 20 years, I've been doing the AI products. One of the things that is really important is to understand that the change is very difficult, but right? when it, in, in organizations, something you change the process and it's very difficult for everybody to consume those, those processes. So it's not only important to kind of predict those um, outcomes, but also make sure that you enable those outcomes in the workflows that the agents or managers are already used to, right? Like for example, if an agent is sitting in, um, in Zendesk, right, or Intercom, and then suddenly there is something that happened um, on for that particular customer on Salesforce. Let's say you got five new um, you know, opportunities for that particular customer. You want to make sure that the support agent understands and, and reacts to it. But you don't want the support agent to always log into Salesforce to kind of get, a, get that information. 
right? In loops, what we do is we, we call this thing called backlog management, which pretty much looks at scoring as an engine in the background to leverage all these data points to understand and, and tell the agent that this is an important, this is a ticket that's important for you to resolve right now because things have changed in the background, right? That's the automation that loops provides, uh, not only from predicting these things, but also making sure that those insights are consumed um, in, the, in the workflows that the agents are already in, right? Um, Adam, if you can just jump to the next slide. All right. As we talked about, right, contextual insights, um, one of the first things that we do is to basically just collect the data from all these different systems, right? There's a lot of information about uh, your data on um, your day-to-day -day conversations that you're having with your uh, with your customers, right? There's a lot of sentiment analysis that we do on, on those particular um, uh, conversations. There's a lot of product feedback that is coming in, which is getting ignored, right? We have seen customers that actually go quarterly and then look at all these different trends and try to create a, a report and send it to engineering, right? Loops does this with every customer interaction at real time. Right, And those sentiments are not only leveraged for analysis or sharing with, with the organization, but also um, do predictive things like you know, um, topic analysis, escalation management, sentiment, sentiment extraction, CSAT prediction. Right, All these different things are backend models that loops automatically brings in into your support system, right? which are you know, training and scoring at, at every customer interaction. And then um, once you have those predictions, how do you share them? Right. The sharing part is where we have this low code engine that not only enables you to push these automations into your um, you know, frontline agents, but also automate them across, um, across your organizations, right? Um, and uh, one, one, of the, one of the examples that, that we always give is uh, escalation prediction, right? Um, you never, escalation predictions are very expensive, right? So if, you, if you're resolving your tickets at level zero, um, the cost of the ticket is very low. If you're resolving the ticket at level three, the cost of the ticket is really high, right? So you want to understand what kind of tickets are getting escalated and, and interrupt them on a timely manner, right? To be able to um, leverage those sentiments and address the problem uh, way before it gets escalated, right? And that's what, that's what Loops helps you do, right? And, and moving into this generative AI part of it, right, with, with chat GPT and GPT-4, a lot of pre-trained transformers, uh, the whole phenomenon about conversational AI um, and how we understand language, right, has moved into being not just understanding, but also being generative, right? Now, Loops is also leveraging this to, 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 to start getting this transformative or generative AI into enterprise, right? There, there is, what I've seen with technology always is that there is, a new technology that comes into the market, and there is a way that you actually adopt that within your uh, organization, right? And enterprises trying to leverage this information is really difficult. And, and it's it's not just about uh, the pre-trained model, but you also have to get that model within the house and you know train it with your data sets and try to make sure that the outcomes that you're trying to generate are in line with the actions that you want to take, right? Um, that's what kind of loop helps. You're already integrating with GP, uh, chat GPT, GPT-4 to kind of um, not just understand things like uh, what is the next best action for an agent, uh, but also uh, derive insights that previously were very hard to derive, right? We're combining anomaly detection, we're combining trend detection with generative AI to generate these insights out of the box, right? Um, and also visualize that in the, in the UI in a very programmatic manner. Right. Um, so this is our, our CX platform, right? As you can see, uh, it starts off with a simple um, integration with a support system like Intercom, Zendesk, or whichever support system that you're using. Uh, we also take in things like CRM and usage data to kind of stay ahead of the game. Um, and uh, we bring this data in with a lot of low code integrations. And, and if you look at all these different systems, they're very configurable, right? So loops, the low code environment that we have is very flexible to kind of adapt to any um, configurable changes that you have made to these systems, right? And get the right kind of a data, right? Once we have the data within our system, there's a lot of different data models that we operate um, out of the box, right? Um, and it could be anomaly detection, it could be scoring engines, trend detection, sentiment analysis, um, and, and a lot of real-time analytics as well, right? And combine that with the actionable interface that we have, which is again, a low-code actionable platform that is very similar to Zapier or Workato, but it's very support-focused, which means that every node within your workflow kind of understands support language, right? Uh, and that's this whole uh, support um, data model that we developed with loops, which combines 
you know, data from all your post sales operations um, to be able to leverage in, in, in taking those actions. Right. As a result, there's a lot of uh, metrics and and um, um, uh, KPIs that we that we really impact, right? And that we're seeing at a at our customer. Like for example, 57 percent reduction in escalation, right? That is because we predict escalations and make sure that you take those actions to avoid those escalations in the first place, right? 37 percent SLA misses, right? This is again prediction of SLAs, uh, SLA misses is one of the biggest algorithms that we have. Uh, we prompt um, uh, your agents to make sure that they are reacting to those um, SLAs uh, at, the, at the right time. 46% uh, increasing productivity because of those next best actions that we start recommending to your agents um, on, on the system of record itself, right? And um, you know, all this is without a data, data science engineer or a, or a data scientist that you need to um, enable in your uh, team. Right. I don't know if you can move to the next one. So fundamentally, two um, support uh, use cases. One is uh, assisted support, which is primarily helping your agents resolve the tickets faster, right? By providing them insights, by providing them next best actions and remediations on the system of record, which which is you know on Zendesk or anything, so that they don't move into yet another UI, right? Um, and the, the second aspect of it is machine control, which is looking at the bird's eye view, which looking at a at a trend from a macro perspective. And looking at things like you know uh, sentiment analysis, right? Impact analysis, risk risk of customers, um, and escalation management, and things like that, right? Um, and, and all this is happening while you know it's it's real time, right? There's no bad jobs that we're running at the end of the week to kind of do this. It's happening at real time. Any point of time, you can log into the UI and look at your how your agents are doing. You have a conversation with the agents. You can you can click in all these um, interactions where the agents have. Maybe perform better, perform worse. Uh, you can have those conversations with them with a single click of a button. Right. Um, I don't know if you move to the next uh, screen. And, and this is this is what we say. This is a um, from a, from the working with support uh, service rocket. Right. It's a, there's a lot of synergies within the organization which have the same vision. Right. Support is right now reactive in most of the organizations, and that's fundamentally because. Um, you know, there's a lot of support tickets and, and support in general is being reactive because it doesn't use the data that will make sure that it goes from a reactive to a very uh, proactive and preventive um, mode of operation, right? Uh, so that's what Loops helps you do. Uh, it basically makes sure that um, we get the right kind of a data, right? We, we serve the reactive aspect by helping your agents um, make those decisions faster, right? But also we help you take the organization more to a proactive and preventive by not only looking at support data, but also looking at things and how the product is being used, right? Uh, what are the different trends within the product usage that are actually generating these contacts, right? And then maybe prevent them or alert the support organization upfront so that they can enable those preventions um, uh, within, within their organization itself. Right? And um, uh, if you if you want a demo, you can just go to the get to demo link, go to our website, and then click on the demo link to uh, to just get a demo of the of the product. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we've been talking a lot about Surface Rocket and Luke's, and want to talk a little bit about you know us uh, you know drinking our own champagne or eating our own dog food, depending on uh, which metaphor you prefer. Um, First, from, from a high level, there's a number of industry studies out there that talk about it. it costs five times as much to attract a customer than to keep an existing one. So delivering the right level of customer experience to your customers is very important. Um, you know, we are heavily using what we talked about earlier. We are, you know, going out there and spending a lot of time to find world-class talent for our support engineers. We're building fabulous processes on top of them, and we're using the loops as our one of our key technologies here. Um, we do allow um, our customers to log um, their support issues in a lot of different ways. Again, chat, come and use asynchronous knowledge bases, um, synchronously log tickets, all of that gets pulled into the loops. Um, we do optimally match um, agents with these tickets, so it gets solved by the first agent, you're not passing from agent to agent. Um, each of those agents has a little dashboard. It shows them trending issues and similar issues and KB articles and rich content. So they're better able to answer all of those questions. 
um, pulls in obviously the, the sentiment analysis you see down here. And then as Ravi was just saying, we do use those dashboards to understand overall what's happening in our support organization. So then, you know, the, the question is, well, the proof is in the pudding. It's great that we do what we talk about. How's it working out? And um, I did actually pull some stats as of yesterday. We can see the newest reviews are first. Um, and as you look at these, you'll see a lot of common themes. Um, you know, top-notch customer service. Um, Danny was an absolute champ with his quick, detailed responses. Um, so let really see the next one says support is fantastic. Every question I had was promptly answered. Um, the next one says the support team are quick to uh, respond and always very helpful. And then the final one here is, you know, the team is very helpful. The common theme you see here is really two really key things. The first one absolutely is you'll see a lot of things about being quick and getting to these issues very quickly and not being bounced around. You get your answer very quickly. Um, and then very importantly, is not only are you quick, but they're actually accurate and helpful questions. It doesn't do any good if you answer quickly and you don't give them the helpful thing. So, um, you know, the net is absolutely helps. Get the right people, put the right process in place and use the right technology. You'll deliver phenomenal um, customer um, support to your end customers and that will help you drive, um, you know, higher uh, MRR and revenue. So with that, what I wanted to do is open it up to a uh, Q&A session. Um, you know, hopefully you guys added some during the session, but if you've been holding them all until now, um, feel free to enter your questions into the uh, question and answer panel. That was a great presentation, Adam. So thank you. And thank you, Ravi. We have a couple of questions that have come up. Um, so the first question is maybe for you, Adam, how does generative AI like chat GPT play into tech enabled services? So um, Ravi touched on this a little bit as part of his presentation as well. So I'll let him um, fill out some of my answers. But um, the first thing is I think um, generative AI like chat GPT over time will fundamentally change um, the lives of really almost all knowledge workers, right? I think it's, it's that foundational of a change coming out. Um, what I see right now is um, in many cases, um, it gets rich information but it's confident whether some of those answers are right or not. And so what I, what I see is it's really helpful as a support agent's um, aid so that, you know, it comes up and, you know, support, aid, they're talking about, let's say an integration with a third party product or something else, ChatGPT can pull in all kinds of rich information and then the support agent can see, you know, which is really relevant. Um, but I think that's gonna change really fast as well. You know, as this gets fed more and more data and more and more usage, these AI models are going to get better and better and better. And I expect it to, you know, fundamentally change the way um, support is done over time. I, I, I completely agree on that. Um, I think there's two aspects of generative AI. One is the open world of generative AI, which is what chat GPT and most of the GPT-4 algorithms are doing, which is handling um, generative AI from a knowledge perspective, right? Like if you have a website or information about service rocket or any other product, right? You can get those answers from there. There's a lot of impact that that these generative algorithms can make within the enterprise, right? And we have not yet touched into that whole segment of information that you can do, right? Not many enterprises have the kind of talent to uh, to to enable these models work on enterprise data yet, right? That's one of the things that that Loops does as well. It basically moves that it takes the leverage or leverages that pre-trained models which are trained on world data and try to train them within your the last layers or last layers of these generative models within your enterprise data itself. So they make them contextual for your enterprise, right? And then make those answers much more, um, not only specific to your enterprise or your product information, but also you can start retraining them, which is what generative models are very good at. Okay. Um, the next question I think is for probably Ravi. How quickly can I get this set up? Yeah, so what, what we say is that, yes, you have a lot of data and you can onboard a lot of data very fast. Uh, what we want um, on the onboarding side to give us for initially a couple of data sources, right? Like your ticketing system, your CRM system, and uh, your escalation management system. We can set up that within an hour, right? And then uh, depending on how far you want to go within your learning system, within a day, your insights are ready, historical insights are ready, right? So it's as good as 
Now, if you want to onboard log systems, which takes a little bit of a time because every log data is a little bit different. If you want to use usage data, that takes up a little bit of a time. Um, so what we say is that any one hour to connect, one day to get your initial insights, and one week if you want to completely train your, uh, your models on your behavior data. Awesome. Um, the next question is, can I use my existing customer support team with tech-enabled services, or do I need to hire a new team? Yeah, so um, it's, it's a great question, um, and, I, and I hate to say it depends. Sometimes it depends. Um, in general, you can use your existing team, right? Um, you know, we talked about, you know, having a core good team of, you know, customer support engineers that have the right empathy, building processes, and then building the technology. As Ravi was just saying, you know, all these things, we want to get things up and running very quickly, and we can put in the process of technology and all of that and get things very quickly. Um, you know, as far as the people themselves, usually if you put better processes and technology in front of them, they want to do a good job and they will do a much better job over time. Um, but, you know, in some cases, we have some customers that do fundamentally change their hiring criteria. So while I don't think you need to change out your support team and hire a whole bunch of other people, you know, there may be some tweaks or changes to, you know, hiring criteria going forward as well. Um, the next question is, your description of tech-enabled services feels a lot like customer success. How is it really different than customer success? So, so again, I think you, both Ravi and I can probably answer answer this, this one as well. Um, you know, I, I think at, a, um, at the fundamental basis of it, it is actually very similar to customer success, right? Both of them are trying to take a, a little more higher level view of the customer. Um, how do we make them successful in their, their efforts? Um, I do think there are some differences as well, right? Customer success does deal a little bit more at the business level and how do we make sure um, that is going well as far as the business relationship and those things are hitting well. Whereas the tech enabled services is still working at tech level, right? And, and enabling the technology and making sure you can fundamentally answer questions for your users. But um, you know, at the end of the day, they both want to increase software adoption. I don't know, Rob, um, if you want to add more to that yeah, one too. Yeah, I, I completely agree to that. And, and, and if with every customer that we are, we are basically saying, it's the same thing. I mean, a lot of customer interactions are happening with customer support, right? But there's a lot of data that you want, or a lot of insights around this customer data, customer support are getting leveraged in the customer success area, right? So they're pretty tied together from, from what they're trying to do, which is help the customer not only retain, but also grow the customer. Um, but the data that they share is pretty pretty similar, and the insights that they want to derive are shared across these organizations. That's what we're seeing at every customer, and that's why we start off with customer support, but we pretty much uh, very quickly uh, start adding more customer success people who want to leverage this information to make those decisions, again, um, uh, faster and at real time. I think that brings us to the final question. If I want to learn more, where can I get more information for the loops? Yes, yeah, so loops, uh, you can go to the website. This is uh, www.theloops.io, right? Um, and then there's a, there's a whole section about product and all this information is right there. There's also a, a link to uh, register for a demo. Uh, you can book a demo with us and then we'll be more than happy to walk you through the whole product within 15 minutes. And then um, that's, that's how we start. Awesome, um, thank you. Um, so that was all the questions, Adam, back to you. Fabulous. Um, what, once again, um, you have the contact information for our companies. Um, you know, we're just servicerocket.com. Um, also, we gave you the QR codes in the beginning. Feel free to reach out with any of us. I'd love to keep the uh, conversation going here. So I think Thank you. Oh, there's one more question that's prop, uh, popped up. Um, do customer support team using tech-enabled services and the loops report higher happiness with their jobs. Yeah, I think I think this this is one of, one of the key points here is um, giving people the right background. Um, you know, even here we we have you can see the uh, brand promise we have. We've got your back. Um, this is actually very intentionally vague. 
uh, because we've got the back of our customers, we've got the back of our software um, partners, and very important, we've got the back of our support engineers. So yes, being able to um, have the right technology so you can effectively do your job is much better than wanting to do a job and, and not having in the right information or having to dig through a whole bunch of different systems. Being able to be targeted with the right types of um, tickets and cases and things to work on versus a bunch of things you don't understand absolutely reduces your stress and you know improves your uh, job satisfaction. Absolutely, I, th I think I completely agree there. Um, providing a lot of information to the agents who are already stressed up, look at trying to address the customer on the panel that they are actually looking right now is the most impactful thing that that people talk about loops as well. Um, and also for managers, when they come into the data, you don't have to swift to a lot of data to kind of derive those insights. Loops is already doing that for you and then providing that information right there. So efficient agents and a better operation center. Well, I wanted to, um, you know, thank, first of all, obviously thank Arthi for organizing all of this, Robbie for co-presenting with me. Um, I had a good time. And as I mentioned, I uh, wanted to thank everyone for attending and please keep the conversations going.